What I wanted to do was to um, to bring my partner, longtime business partner. We've been married for 15 years. We're actually not married, but professionally. Um, I started a company um, in the early 2000s, and um, I just had a big one at BEA. That's how I know Christina. And I went off and started a consulting company. And um, I realized very quickly I can sell at anything. I can raise money. I can do lots of things. But delivering on those items, actioning those next steps was, was not my strength. And so it's very easy to, to imagine as, a, as an entrepreneur, oh, I have to be good at everything. I've got to be good at making payroll, hiring people, selling, delivering, building product. Well, the, the answer is no one is good or great at all of those things. And so um, I actually went to Diana pretty early on and said, hey, you know, I've got all this business I can generate, but I need someone who can help me deliver and to start to productize what we're doing. And so um, I had a couple of failed partnerships and then I met Steven. And so Steven Latosinix became my business partner. We went into the company together and our trajectory of growth went like this to this. So we were one of the fastest growing profitable consulting firms you've ever met. And we did it we were growing 300% year over year, um, but that wasn't because of me, it was because of us. And so what I thought we would have Steven do is kind of tell the story from his perspective about how we paired manager, leader, plus entrepreneur, and then also bring that into the present. So he's gonna have kind of two, two things to talk about. One is our partnership and the blending and how you can find a partner um, and build that relationship. But secondly, he's gonna talk about um, as we're building our companies, how to think about your exit first. So as you guys know, I run a private equity fund with Steven and we're acquiring companies. And so we love businesses, but we also like businesses that are not traditional acquisitions. And so what he's going to talk about is how to look at your business from the start um, as, as a potential exit and how to maximize value and build that company from the beginning with the exit in mind. So um, I will turn it over to uh, my good friend, Stephen. And Stephen, I, I imagine you have some things you want to say, but is a kind of back and forth conversation all right for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I've thought about some of the things I want or points I want to make here, but I don't need to have a dialogue or a monologue here. So um, as, as Chad might want, <laughs> um, <laughs> right, but, but, but I will, uh, I'll go ahead and start and feel free to interrupt me anytime. And if, if I'm, talking too fast and you can't interrupt me, just raise your hand. I can see all of you. So I will uh, definitely be quiet and give up the mic. Um, so I, I think if, if I start back at, at kind of uh, early 2000s when I first met Promise, and, and it's kind of funny to be here because Diana is the, uh, Diana, it says you're Stephen Latassa Nix. I, just I know, heard. but it's, it's an administrative <laughs> reason. So we, Well, I'll, I'll work with you then. Give yes. you a, a control. Um, but uh, when I, you know, Diana had introduced us, as Promise said, and it, it was a really important time for me because I had spent a lot of time um, in larger companies and was used to having a lot of colleagues and a lot of people around me. And then I went off and started um, working to build my own consulting business and practice on my own. And uh, a friend of me once diagnosed me as being professionally lonely. And I think. Um, it really resonated with me as a um, as a diagnosis, if you will. And so, meeting Promise was uh, was a really important step, kind of in in my own evolution of of being able to be an entrepreneur. And um, it, it was a really powerful relationship and really energizing. And and I can't imagine trying to build a business actually on my own, having having gone through built one with someone else. But it, it also comes with a series of challenges, and that's. That's actually where I want to focus. I mean, you can see we're still together 15 years later, so I think it's evident that it's a, it's a good relationship. But I want to talk about the stuff that no one actually ever talks about, which is kind of the, the harder side of, of, of a relationship. And I think for me, um, uh, as I kind of stepped back, I, I thought like, okay, 15 years ago, what's the one thing I wish I had known or the one thing someone had told me about partnerships that I, that I didn't know? And it, it, it's this notion, um, uh, of these different skill sets, right? The artist, the manager, leader, the entrepreneur. But when you go and read about them and what, what's written either by Tony or others is they refer to them as gifts, right? And I didn't see the world that way. I saw the world as, um, you know, I, I'm a strong manager, leader. I have some artists. I don't think I have much entrepreneur <laughs> and I rely on others to bring that to me today. Um, 
But when you have a strong focus in one area, it's easy to see your area as the right way, right? And not to see it as a skill set that I bring, especially when it's your own company. I mean, when you're in a, a larger organization, sometimes it's easier to understand that you play a certain component. But when you're at the top of your own organization, whether you're there by yourself or with someone else, it's easy to kind of see it as, well, my way is the right way and not to celebrate the other person's gifts, right? And, and I think in, in kind of dialing back to the early days of working with Promise, I saw her as a good salesperson and me as a good implementer, right? And really, um, both those descriptions are a little belittling to both of us, right? Because they're so limiting and so confining in what you bring. Um, and rather than kind of seeing, rather than seeing our relationship as us bringing different gifts to the table, I saw it as kind of very skill set based. And I think that um, that was a hard thing to work through. And I, and I over time, got better at, at understanding this for myself. And I think Promise also grew right and, and that those, those abilities to grow together really bring things. And so as I step back and I think, okay, like, like how do you make this work then? It, it really is kind of, for me, an evolution of trust as a starting point and trusting that the other person's intentions are good, trusting that the other person will do what they say they'll do, trusting their skill set. Um, and then it's nurture, right? Because we all need to grow and develop. So um, you have to be there for your partner to really help them grow and, and, and to be able to say the things somebody else won't say, um, but say it in a way that's for them and not for you, right? So it can't be, I'm telling you this because I'm trying to motivate you to do what I want you to do. It has to be, I'm telling you this because I see it and I want someone to, to say this to me when I'm in this place, right? And so it's this, this kind of trust, and nurture, and then it's growing, right? So it's a commitment to yourself to grow and to be um, better at what you do and to allow your partner to grow and be better at what they do. Um, does that resonate with you guys? It does. Yes, definitely. Yeah, because it's, because it's uh, and I think it, it, for me, the hardest part of it, right, was, was learning to see it not as um, my way or your way, but that they were complimentary um, and, and, not, and again, not skill-based. I think that's, that's a really important point for me because it's easy to kind of put someone in a bucket and say, oh, you know, James is good at sales and Sarah's good at um, implementation and, and Christine's our internal expert, right? It's easy to say those things, but that really kind of uh, undervalues what the, what the person actually brings and puts them in a, a bucket or a lane that, that I think in the long run isn't helpful. Can I add a couple things to that? Um, so, so one is, um, you know, I believe this is, again, a strong opinion held loosely. Um, I believe that it's, it's best to be excellent. Um, and so what I mean by that is if I'm going to be a good salesperson, I want to be fucking amazing. I want to be the best version of, I want to be the person who exceeds revenue targets. Um, if I'm going to be a, a, a person who raises money, I want to be the best at it. If I'm going to do product strategy, I don't want to do it okay. I want to do it. And so um, I felt like um, in a partnership where someone brings other gifts, it's the only scenario where you can be exceptional at the things you're exceptional at, right? So imagine a situation where before Stephen joined, we had relationships with um, Adobe, Autodesk, really top companies where I would sell them a grand vision and then at night try to figure out how the fuck we're going to deliver this thing, right? Like, how are we going to get this? Whereas before it, it became, I could go into a meeting with Steven, sell a massive vision of how we're going to do something. And in that meeting, the customer hears from Steven, here's how we're going to create this. Here's how we're going to implement this. And so he gets feedback from the customer. I get feedback from the customer. And so our deals went from, you know, five figures to six to seven figures. And so you Im we immediately see the growth. We also see profitability because Steven's a process person. And so we saw, you know, his gift of how do we productize this? How do we price it consistently? So there's definitely the ability to be exceptional in, in your gift area because you're not trying to cover everything. I also believe, and as I'm watching us as a pri doing private equity, it also makes everyone else around you more confident. So your team is more confident because they see that, you know, not one person is a single point of failure. 
Um, it makes your spouse more confident because they're like, oh, you've got someone who's a buffer, <laughs> right? Um, and that's a, re that's a reality because you're going to be emotional. You're going to fail. It's easier to fail and win with someone than it is on your own. And so I guess I would just kind of say, you know, repeat what you said, Stephen, but also just add, it allows you to be exceptional because it gives you space, but also um, it creates an opportunity for other people to interact differently um, than they would if it were just one individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's so right. I mean, that that not failing alone piece is is really important because you have you have someone to talk about and to to digest it and learn. And again, I'll go back to a comment I could have made earlier about this room not this group not being an echo chamber, right? Having a partner allows you to have conversations about your failure that aren't just kind of the spiral that goes on in your own head and gets fed back to you from the people around you because they're only listening to you, right? So the only, the, only, the only advice, most of them, the only advice they're gonna give you is something that you just told them and they, they observed you telling them, right? And so it, it really does that. And I guess I'm happy to talk more about this or take questions, but the last thing I would wanna make as a point on this is that having a partner who has different gifts than you also allows you to grow in the area that they excel at. You, you probably will never become the, that will never probably become your dominant, but you will learn to, to behave I certainly have learned to take risks and Promise would probably tell you in, in the current ventures we're in, I take risks in very different ways than I did in the first one. But that's because, that's because I've learned from her that taking risks isn't actually a bad thing.